So this is inhibitory control? Yeah. Um, so we have a cylinder, um, and we start with a black cylinder, and we teach the dogs through several trials that they can access food uh, from one of the sides of the cylinder. Um, and the parts that are, are blocked are what are facing them. Right, so the the entrances are sort of perpendicular to their approach. If okay. that makes sense, mm-hmm. uh, and so we teach them that they can come around and get it from the side. And then once they've learned to do that without you know, investigating the cylinder in other ways, that that's their motor pattern, they're going to come. They're going to get the food from the side, and they know they can do that. We move on to a clear cylinder, so now they can see that the food is right there. And so of course, almost all of the dogs on the first trial will come up. Boop, hit their nose on the cylinder and go, oh, that feels nasty, um, and then explore and try to try to find a way in. A lot of them will paw at it, or um, some of them get get really frustrated, um, and but then they usually figure out, oh, yeah, I can get it from the side. Uh, and we see how quickly they realize that they can just get it from the side again and, and not hit their nose on the front of the cylinder. And um, part of that is is a measure of inhibitory control, right? I can see it, but I have to know that I have to go around to get it rather than doing what I want to do, which is go and get the food right in front of me. Um, And then we actually add in one other piece to that, which is we put a detour, um, a a little barrier, uh, right in front of the side they've been accessing it from and see how long it takes them to figure out that they can go to the other side of the (laughs) cylinder. So it's a fun sort of problem solving thing as well. Um, This is what we call laterality. So we have this little platform and first the dog has to step up onto the platform and then they have to step off the platform. And we look at which paw they use, so left or right paw. Um, It's a very simple task, uh, especially compared to say the cylinder or this box or, or anything like that. But um, it actually asks a sort of interesting question, which is, do they tend to lead with one paw or the other? Um, and part of that is interesting because of comparisons to humans and handedness, right? Um, the human population is mostly right-handed, some percent of, of left-handedness, and human psychology tells us that there are systematic differences between right-handed and left-handed people and how the brain works differently uh, and things like that. And so we're sort of asking that question with dogs as well. This is odor discrimination. Um, So we have these little um, rubber, they're called elbows, I think. Um, And we have them, one of them is loaded with food and the other one has nothing in it. but it's that we have little um, cotton balls in there that stop them from being able to see which one has food in it. And so it's hopefully entirely odor-based that they would see, uh, have to determine which one has the food and which one doesn't. And we give them about 20 seconds to explore either, both elbows, um, and we see how much time they spend near one or the other. Some of them, especially the first few tasks, they, they're really excited, uh, and then they start, they start getting frustrated. They're like, why won't you just give me the food? <laughs> and then this you saw with the adults, so this is pointing, um, and this is unsolvable, which you also saw, though. This, I, this, I forget, I think this may not be a spontaneous uh, mutual gaze. I think we might have... Uh, elicited it in this context for the for the sake of the photo <laughs> but um but we did a very similar thing with with the puppies as to what you saw so in uns- uh, in unsolvable yeah. can they ever get the box open or is it the puppies have never managed to solve the box um that's the name yes with adults it's a little trickier because they're larger they have more force behind their paws um but the hope is that they can and and one of the things we do with piloting is see okay try it on a whole bunch of dogs see do any happens. of them open it if not if not great if they do how do we adjust because the point is really that it shouldn't be solvable and we want to see how long they keep trying and if they ask for help basically okay. 